Hey y'all, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Cheesewa. I'm still currently thinking of a producer name. I'm currently thinking of Chizzy Made the Beat instead of Chizzy Beats because there's already another Chizzy Beats. Shout out to that Chizzy Beats. Um, but let me know what you think my producer name should be. But welcome to my channel and Behind the Beat where I'm going to be teaching you guys in this episode how to sample a 90s or early 2000 R&B song and flip it into something that you might hear on the Chicks tapes for artists like Bryson Tiller, Summer Walker, and He Who Shall Not not be named um but let's get into it i'm gonna be giving you guys steps on how i sample songs so the first step is you have to pick a fire sampleable song so i'm going into my file of samples and i'm gonna pick this song called remedy by jagged edge um one of my favorite groups and this is one of my favorite songs of theirs so before i play i'm just gonna lower the pitch so no copyright issues come at me um uh, hate to see that but yeah i'm gonna play it for you guys so i really wish i could sing because i would love to sing this song um but god did not feel like blessing me with a voice but it's okay so as you can see the default tempo for this song is 130 which is completely wrong if i put on the metronome and play it for you you're gonna hear how off it is so let me do that it's just completely off and that's just because that um, FL sets it to 130. So I go to this, this website called TuneBat to find out the BPM and the key of the song. And once I do that, I'm going to go back into FL Studios and chop off this beginning section because it's just not needed and it's going to mess up the metronome when I put it on. So now I'm going to play it with the right tempo. And as you see, as I start to lower the pitch, um, the tempo, it's going to change the length of the song, but it's not going to change any properties of the song. So if we play it, you're going to hear it's perfect. See what we want it is right in time. So that's step two getting now step three is finding the part of the song that you actually want to sample um for me i've listened to this song several times like i said i love this song um so i know i want to sample the end part so right there is where i want where they start saying body um so what i'm going to do is start a little bit before just so I have some, like a grace period of mine, a grace period. And notice how I turned off the metronome. You always want to turn off the metronome before you go into Edison and record. So I clicked on Edison, it opened up, and now I'm going to start the recording process. I'm going to change the setting that you see that says input on input. I'm going to change that to on play. And then I'm going to click the recording button and click play and now it's going to start recording yes they are actually singing this fast this is not a chipmunk this is jagged edge um so now that i have that all together i have to actually like refine the section because like i said i started a little bit before when i wanted to start recording just because it's easier for me to see it that way and since i've been sampling for a minute i kind of already know where it's going to start i see this big um downbeat like right here that to me signals that that's going to be a one so i know that i need to get it as close as possible to that downbeat and on the opposite end i want it to end right before that next downbeat which is the four so if i um play this let's hope and see if i get it, it loop properly i'm going to click that infinity symbol and that's going to allow it to just play on a loop So I'm just listening and hoping it at loose properly. Success. Okay. I got it right on the first try. That is a perfect loop. And if you didn't hear it, I'm going to play it again. So you know what I mean by a perfect loop. So when it plays, I'm wanting the end to perfectly and seamlessly flow back into the beginning. So you're going to hear it right here. So see how it just goes seamlessly right into the next portion? That is exactly what I want and I am done. So I'm gonna click that button and send it to the playlist. 
and once I do that you can even like kind of check by going into the playlist and seeing it sends us to the very front and you can see that it basically ends right at the end of the eighth bar which is what I wanted but it's not perfect so what I'm gonna do is um, click on the sample and stretch it so I'm gonna go change it to none and just stretch it till it hits the nine and now I have a perfect loop well as perfect as perfect can be so now I'm just gonna go hunting for another part of the song that I want to sample because I usually like to get all my chops done in the first like the first cut I don't like to keep going back and forth and finding new samples so I'm just finding it right now So I found what I wanted to do, so I cleared out Edison and I'm recording again. And now I'm just going in and refining the places because again, I'm looking for the one and, and looking for that before it, so it can loop perfectly. I'm checking and you can't hear it well because it's so sped up, but that was not a good loop. So I'm just refined the beginning a little bit and this is how it actually sounds. I'm hoping to get a good loop from this. So it's not perfect, but it's good enough for the direction that I want to go in. So I'm gonna go ahead and send it to the playlist and just like how I did for the other samples, stretch it. So now I have all of my samples out of the way. I am happy. I know I don't really need any more parts of the song. So I'm gonna go in, delete that, and just um, start actually chopping up the samples that I've got. So what I'm gonna do is double click on this. Well, first I'm gonna, yeah, double click on this. This is the audio I cut and then go and open up Fruity Slicer. You can use Slice Hex if you want, if you're already experiencing that, but Fruity Slicer is just simpler to me. So I'm dragging and dropping that into Fruity Slicer. And as you can see, when you do that, it naturally um, chops it up. And however, I'm not really sure. I, I think it just stops at whatever transients it sees, but that's not what I want. I want something um, simpler. So I'm going to go and use the beat function um to slice it correctly so i open that slice thing and click on beat and now it is chopped into 32 evenly spaced bars beats so now um as you can see it's like layered it out like this and if you just start clicking around you're going to see different keys on your keyboard on your or on your laptop correspond to different things so I'm just playing around like there's no science to figure out how to sample. So right now I'm just playing around with the keys and seeing what I come up with. So, um, yes, I'm moving at the speed of lightning right now. No, I'm kidding. This is just a sped up version of me coming up with the melody that I actually um, decided to use. It's all about experimentation. It's going to take time. This did not happen in the span of one minute, um, but you just got to keep doing what you think sounds right and you'll come up with something. So this is what I came up with. I'm not going to lie, I have this stank bass on right now because this sounds amazing to me. Just the little stutters, little baby. If I could sing y'all, I would be singing with this song right now, but I can't. But that is what I was able to come up with um with the first chop so now i decided to chop up the second thing off camera and this is what i came up with so i'm thinking that this is what's going to be the chorus this is what i'm using as the chorus um but the other thing is going to be the for the verses so that was without any effects and now i'm going to show you the effects that i put on this so i put an eq for the fruity eq2 just to cut out the low and the high ends of the sample that's going to give me space to add drums of my own then i added the fruity luck filter which is very key to this now this adds like an underwater muffle effect to it and you can change it by um increasing or decreasing the cut on it i just kept it at 50 percent and then i added the fruity love filter again and added this thing called the um simple triangle low pass lfo i don't know how to describe what it does but it gives like a waving effect to it um be careful it can be a lot sometimes but this is how it sounds without 
And this is how it sounds with it on. See how if I change the low cut, it's going to make it sound more underwater and muffled. It's really all about preference. Okay, so now that I have that done, I'm going to show you guys what I was able to do off camera um, with the song. So, as you can see, I decided to add some more stuff just because having the sample isn't good enough for me. Um, so, I decided to add some chords. These chords might look a little bit complex, but everything that I'm showing underneath this little arrow is just a repeat of what you see on the top head. So, I'm just going to go ahead and play these chords. This is using a Rhodes piano from the Citrus um, VST and a steel guitar from the Citrus VST. I can't really explain the chords because I'm not very good at music theory while well, explaining music theory. So when I get better, I'll be able to better tell you guys how I came up with stuff like that. Um, next, the most critical thing is getting, well, let me show you how it sounds together. So the next thing that I wanted to add was a bass. Now, having a good like synth bass is very important for songs like this. Um, it just adds like another layer like of depth to it. So I went and used the synth two um, from Citrus and I increased it an octave just so you guys can hear it because without headphones, it's gonna be hard for you guys to hear. So this is how it sounds. So it just complements the chords that I already had before and mind you again this is up an octave now it's down an octave and you still can't really hear the depth of it probably because of the screen recording but I'll include it in the end. So all together this is how it sounds. And honestly that's really all the main melodies the main part of this song. Um, now I'm going to just show you guys some of the drums. Um, I'm going to show you guys the hi-hat pattern that I used. So some rolls on the fours. You hear a little bit of a perk in the background and an open hat. So yeah, that's it for the hi-hats and the open hat. Next is the clap, standard clap. You just put it on the three. That's really all there is to it. Um, snare. It just plays with the clap. And then the kick. So for the kick, this is what I had. Pretty simple pattern. It just kind of goes along with the bass. So all together, this is how the drums sound. So that's really all I have for the percussion. I did decide to go back in for the melodies and add one more thing with an FM Rhodes piano also from Citrus. And this is what I came up with. It just pairs nicely with the melody. So yeah, um, that is really all that I have in terms of how you flip a 90s or 2000s R&B sample and turn it into something modern. Um, this type of stuff, like when I first started doing music like this, it was pretty difficult for me just because I didn't, the hardest part for me was always how do I chop a sample and get that correctly. Um, but with practice, this becomes so much more easier. And now you can make your own chicks tape because I know some of us have decided to stop listening to the chicks tapes. So um, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys like the video like comment and subscribe and let me know any more other content that you want me to be doing for my behind the beat series um so i'm gonna go ahead and play the beat and i hope you guys enjoy have a nice day Busy.